Hey, it's Vanessa, the Crafty Gemini. I post weekly videos right here on my YouTube channel. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make the turnstile block. All right, so let's have a look at the block we're going to be making. This is a traditional quilt block called the turnstile block. Now, I'm going to show you how to make one so it finishes as a 9-inch square. If you notice, you only need two different fabrics. So if you're still a quilting beginner, I think this is going to be a fun one for you to try out. Uh, it's quite simple to make. Just make sure to follow the video tutorial step by step so you don't mix up any of these angles because sometimes with triangles, it can be a little tricky. But I think it's pretty straightforward, and I hope that you enjoy some tips that I share with you on how I like to choose my fabrics for my projects. So let's jump right into fabric selection and we'll make a turnstile block. In this sample turnstile block, you'll see that we're only using two different fabrics. So I think this is a great block for beginners to start off with because it's not too confusing. You only need to pick two different fabrics. So here's how I do it. The two fabrics that I'm using in the block, I want one to play as my light fabric and the other one to play as my dark fabric. So if you can look at this sample block and instantly tell which of these two fabrics is the light, and the other one the dark, then I know that there's high enough contrast for me and I think it's good to go. So let's play a little game and sample out some fabrics next to each other so you can kind of get used to this exercise and do it at home yourself. So if we're looking at these two different prints, two different prints, right? Can we automatically tell which one is the light and which one is the dark? Not really, right? Because they're very similar. This one has more white background fabric that's empty versus this one, but they're both pretty much kind of in the same category, right? None of them really stand out as the, the apparent dark fabric in the combination of these two. However, if we took this print and put it next to this one, right, can you see how obviously one is the light and one plays as the dark? So that is kind of the contrast that I'm going for. And these are actually the two fabrics that I'll be using for the turnstile block we'll be making in this tutorial. That way it can pop and you can see how the high contrast fabrics play with one another. Now let's talk a little bit about scale. And here I'm talking about scale of the actual print design. Here is one of my prints, the little Casitas print, and you can see it's really cute and pretty, but when choosing fabrics that have some larger scale prints like these guys, okay, you need to be mindful of how small you're cutting your patchwork pieces. If you notice, this little triangle here, if I cut it out of this fabric somewhere here, you're really going to lose the flower. Okay, I mean, you can see a leaf and you'll be able to tell that it's some kind of floral, but because you're cutting the pieces so small out of the larger scale prints, you're going to be eating up a lot of the beauty of these large scale prints. So I tend to save prints like this for other projects that let me use a larger chunk of the design in the project. Same thing goes for these houses. I would hate to chop up a little piece like this where you don't see any of the houses. So keep that in mind and keep those larger scale prints for something else, not necessarily for this project, all right? So play around with some of the fabrics in your stash and choose two fabrics where one plays as the light and the other as the dark and you'll be ready to start your turnstile block. Okay, so you've picked up the fabrics that you want, my light, my dark. Step number one, head on over to the ironing board with some heavy starch. Now when it comes to starching your fabric, some quilters starch and some don't. I'm one of the quilters that does like to starch and I use heavy starch. Any cheap old heavy starch will do. The one that I use I just get at the dollar store. So I spray it on my fabric and then I just hit it with a hot dry iron to set the heavy starch in the fibers. What I find that this does is to make my fabric stiffer so it's easier to cut more precise cuts and also easier to sew. From our background fabric here, we're going to cut out two squares that measure five and three eighths inches. Now, if you've never cut out fabric using a three eighths of an inch measurement, let me show you how it works. It's super easy. The same way that you line up your fabric with different lines on your rulers, four inch, four and a half inch, you're going to do the same thing, except you're going to use one of the smaller lines. Every single one of these little hash marks here is an eighth of an inch increment. So for this block, we need to cut from our background fabric five and three eighths inch by five and three eighths inch square. So that tells me we need to go all the way to five inches first. Here's one, two, three, four, and five. And then you're gonna go three eighths of an inch higher than that. So here's five, one eighth, two eighth, and three eighth. It's gonna be the little hash mark right before the five and a half inch line. So five and three eighths should be lined up here and then also in the other dimension. So you can get a proper square at five and three eighths inches. And now that you know where the 3 8 inch mark is on your ruler, that is what you're going to use to cut 
two blocks out, five and three eighths inches square. We need two of them of our background fabric. I always cut my pieces, especially if I'm using yardage, I cut it a little bit bigger than what I need. That way I can trim everything up nice and flush and get the exact dimensions that I need. After you've cut out your two squares at five and three eighths inches square, I want you to cut them on the diagonal. And I'm just lining up my ruler at the little corner up here and the other side down here so I can get a nice crisp cut. And that's what you should get from those two squares. Now out of the same fabric, I'm gonna cut another square at five and three quarters inches square. And this one we're gonna cut across both diagonals. And then carefully just pick up my ruler and turn my ruler to cut so that I don't have to disturb the block and nothing moves on me. So you've cut it into four pieces now. And then from your dark print, you just need to cut out one square at five and three quarter inches. And then this one square, we're gonna cut across both diagonals. And after all your cutting, these are the pieces that you should end up with. Now let me show you how to kind of match them up and sew them together to create the turnstile block. The first thing I want you to do is separate the smaller ones. And we're gonna work with these big four triangles right here. It helps to orient them in the way that they're going to be sewn so you can visually see what the finished block looks like. So the first one I want you to do is put just a triangle like this so it's kind of going like a backward seven on the straight edges of the triangle. Then the next one is going to go right here. And you're kind of creating a pinwheel like this. And then that last one goes right here. All right. So this is the correct positioning when it's all pieced together, how the big ones are going to go. Now we need to go back in here to these empty spots and fill in. Now, because these were cut twice on the diagonals, obviously they're smaller than these larger ones were. So we need to grab one of each of these to make up this triangle section that's missing here to complete the overall square. Now it can get confusing because you have a lot of angles going on, but here's a way that I like to do it so you can visually see what you're doing. Just take the dark fabric and put it right there the other one here, the other one here, and this one right here, okay? So if you're watching this video, you can pause it and look to see how I've oriented my pieces and then repeat the same thing for yours. If you go step by step like that, you should not have a problem putting this together. Now we'll fill in the spots with these guys. So this one obviously needs to fit in that way. And you can see where the little peak of the triangle is and that tells you how to orient that last one. And here is, the finished design layout for our turnstile block. If you're a beginner, you may be wondering how in the world are you gonna piece these all together? Well, it's kind of like a puzzle. You have to put some pieces together first before you can sew larger ones on there. Remember that the seams that you're sewing all have to match up. So for example, I cannot sew this one to this one because it doesn't reach all the way across. I mean, it can be done, but save yourself the hassle. So the easiest way to put, say, this block together is to first of all look at it as four individual blocks. Now to put these three together, the way that makes the most sense is to combine these two first, and then you'll see that it equals the exact same size as this one. It will be two halves that then you can go back and sew together here. So if you take a step back and look at your projects and not just this quilt block, it pretty much goes for everything, and split it up into a way that makes sense to you visually, I think it will help you speed up the process in sewing and it'll make things a little bit easier for you. So that's how they're all gonna work. You're gonna sew the piece, or the two separate uh, fabrics that go together, a light and a dark, together first, and then you'll sew those halves to the solid background triangle. Now it's very important that you orient these the exact same way that they appear here because if by mistake you swap this out, okay, or sew it like this, you see from here to here it still matches, but that is not gonna lay correctly in the finished block. So you don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure that you're keeping everything together. So, so that I don't move them out of where they need to be, I'm gonna create two stacks 
of exactly how they appear here. So I'm going to take these two and just put it like this. And I'm going to take these two and I can see that they're oriented the exact same way as these guys. Okay. And then these two are upside down of this. And you can see that if I scoot this here, it's the same way. So now I know that I can take these over to my sewing machine and I'm just going to piece this one to this one along this straight edge in the middle where they meet and repeat the same thing to this guy and then do the same thing to these two as well. Now I'm at the sewing machine and I have my units here the same way that we had them on the table. Once you have them in the stack, it's okay to turn it like this. Do you see how they're all the same now? But it's important that you do not change the side of each triangle in which it needs to be sewn because this side here, if I sew it like this, will be a totally different looking piece, all right? So visually set it up and then move them into position. I'm gonna set this up here. You wanna sew with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I just take one from each stack And now that these units are done, let's go back now and place them where they belong. Like that. Again, separating them into their four individual units, and we just need to sew these two together, these two, these two, and these two, to end up with four blocks, which we would then call a four patch, because you're gonna piece four of these together to equal your finished block. Now we head to the sewing machine to sew these up. Now you'll see that you end up with four identical blocks. And this point, you may want to measure them to trim them down to size. If you're making the one block, it's not gonna matter too much exactly what they measure as long as they're consistent because you're not really using other blocks around it to match it up with. But each of these blocks should measure about five inches square. That one looks good. If they're a little bit bigger, you can trim them down so that they're all the same equal size. And once you're done trimming up your blocks to size, let's lay them out the way that they need to be so we can piece our block together. Easy, just like that. Grab some pins and before I move them out and orient them a different and wrong way, right there, put these two need to be sewn together. And I'm abutting those seams right here at the bottom so they match up. And I just put a pin right in the middle of the side that needs to be sewn. So even if I move this, I know that it's this side that has to be sewn down first. I'm just going to finger press these and after I sew it, I'll go back and hit it with the iron. So one just goes on top and one goes on the bottom. Put this here. Make it so that you have one seam going to the right and one seam going to the left and that's going to help reduce your bulk right in the center intersection of all those seams. And there it is. Let's give it a good press and see what we got. This is what we get when we're done sewing it. So I'm gonna give it a good press and then open it up and see how those points look in the center. Give it a good press to flatten out that bulk right in the center there. Okay. And there is your completed turn style quilt block. Now the block is designed to finish at nine inches square. So if you notice, when you measure your block right now, it should measure nine and a half inches by nine and a half inches. And that just means that after it's sewn in, assuming you're gonna piece it into a quilt or table runner or whatever you want, 
another quarter inch seam is going to be taken up on both sides here. All right, so here is our finished turnstile quilt block. I think it looks great. Now, I hope you'll give this project a try. And if you do, remember, just take some pictures and you can either post it to my Facebook page or tag me on Instagram using the hashtag Crafty Gemini. If you like any of the fabrics that you saw featured in this video, click open the description box below. I've included links there for you on where you can find it because it is actually my first ever fabric collection. It's called Dominicana by me for Timeless Treasures Fabrics. And it's a great, great collection to work with. And I hope that you'll be able to get your hands on it and make some really great projects. Thanks again for watching this video. Remember, if you enjoyed it, hit it with the thumbs up below, share it across the different social media sites, and don't forget to click the subscribe button because in a future video, I'm gonna teach you how to take this little quilt block, turn it into a mini quilt. We're gonna finish it off and even teach you how I like to hang my mini quilts on my walls. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.